Amen. We're going to pause in our Colossians series today. So if you would, I'm going to ask you to turn to a rather curious text that really doesn't seem at first glance to fit what we're going to talk about here today for a resurrection Sunday morning, and that is Exodus chapter 13. If you turn in your Bible to Exodus chapter 13, and as soon as somebody with one of the Red Pew Bibles gets there, shout out the page for us. 70. 70. I heard a couple right up here and back there, so 70. Page 70 in those Red Pew Bibles. Exodus chapter 13. There is something to be said for simple reminders. For us, we share in communion as a simple reminder. And we will do so at the end of the message today. Again, when the video plays, the elements are passed. Grab one and take at your leisure. But a simple reminder is found in both the cracker representing the bread, which is the body of Jesus Christ, and the cup, which is representing the blood of Jesus Christ. It's about that sacrifice. Simple reminder, that's what we share in. For the Jews, their reminders were wrapped up in feasts, festivals, appointed times, if you will, of the year where they were to remember. We're talking about simple reminders. Feast, festivals, appointed times to remember. In Exodus chapter 13, we find the introduction of one of those times of remembrance. Exodus chapter 13 follows the end of chapter 12 where the Passover was instituted. And the Passover was the time in which God helped the Israelites escape from the heavy-handed slavery imposed upon them by Egypt. And so God passed over the firstborn among Israel while He killed those of among Egypt and He allowed them to escape. And then we get to chapter 13. And in chapter 13, verse 3, Moses says to the people of Israel, Remember this day. This is the day after the Passover, which became known as the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The two were very closely tied together, Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. In fact, only one day separated them. Unleavened Bread followed Passover the very next day throughout their times of remembrance. And so Moses says to the people in Exodus 13, 3, Remember this day in which you came out from Egypt, out of the house of slavery. For by a strong hand, the Lord brought you out from this place. So remember that. And how would they do so? Well, no leavened bread is to be eaten. For today in the month of Abib, you're going out, and when the Lord brings you into the promised land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Hivites, and Jebusites, which He swore to your fathers to give you, a land flowing with milk and honey, you shall keep this service in this month as a memorial to remember what the hand of God had accomplished. Seven days, verse 6, seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day there shall be a feast to the Lord. The unleavened bread shall be eaten for seven days. No leavened bread shall be seen with you, and no leaven shall be seen with all your territory. Hang in there with me. You know I get somewhere. And you'll tell, you'll tell your son on that day, this is verse 8, you will tell your son, it is because of what the Lord did for me that I came out of Egypt. Now, it's almost like the son's asking something, isn't it? What's going on here? Why are we doing these things? What do they mean? Well, tell him it's because of what God did. And in verse 9, it shall be a sign on your hand and a memorial between your eyes. The law of the Lord may be in your mouth. For with a strong hand, the Lord has brought you out of Egypt. Now, what we saw in verse 8 with telling your son... It's because of what the Lord did. He further elaborates on in verse 14. So let's follow down to that and we'll finish there. Verse 11, when the Lord brings you into that promised land of the Canaanites, as He swore to you and your fathers to give you, you shall set apart for the Lord all that opens its womb first. All the firstborn of your animals that are males shall be the Lord's. Every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb. 
and you will not redeem, or if you will not redeem it, you shall break its neck. Every firstborn of man among your sons you shall redeem. And when its time comes for your son, when he asks, verse 14, what does this mean? There's the key phrase. You shall say, by a strong hand the Lord brought us out of Egypt from the house of slavery. So when the son asks in verse 14, what does this mean? Tell him it's what God has done. And that's why we do what we do. What does it mean? Let's carry this up to the modern day celebration of Passover. The modern day celebration of Passover is known as the Passover Seder. And it's a very structured meal where certain elements are used continually and certain practices are done continually. And at one point in this very structured Passover meal, the youngest child in the household. And if there are no children in the household, everyone or anyone is able to ask these questions. The youngest child during the Passover meal is to ask the question, what makes this night different than all other nights? There are many different versions of that. Often extrapolated out to four different questions called the four questions during the Passover meal. Question number one, the children ask, why on this night do we eat only unleavened bread compared to always leavened bread? Number two, on this night, why do we eat bitter herbs rather than vegetables? The third question, why do we recline on this night during the meal rather than sit upright? And the fourth and final question, why do we dip the parsley in salt water on this night when we never dip it otherwise? Now, all of these elements have in mind the redemptive act of God in rescuing Israel out of their slavery. Altogether... These four questions in English are based upon the Hebrew question, which reads, Ma nishtana halala hazeh mekol halelot. And literally it means, what makes this night different than all the others? And as I was getting ready for Easter Sunday morning, Resurrection Sunday morning, those two questions came to my mind. As we looked at Passover and the unleavened bread and leading up to this Resurrection Day, which is also another festival or feast of the, of the first fruits. Those two questions. What makes this day different? This day, for us today. What makes this day different than all others? And question number two, what does it mean? To the first question, what makes this day different than all other days? I would say He makes this day different from all the others. He, Jesus, the Son of God and the Savior of the world makes this day different. Because on that day... He walked out of the grave alive and alive forevermore. And by doing so, He proved that He was and is today and will always be what He is described as in the very Word of God to us. What makes this day different than all the other days? He makes this day different. He who is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He who was pierced for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities and yet was not abandoned to the grave nor left to see decay. What makes this day different? He, Jesus, who is the bright and morning star, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He who holds the key to death and Hades. What makes this day different than all the other days? It is He who is the rose of Sharon. He, the bread of life, the ancient of days, the capstone, the rabbi. What makes this day different? He makes this day different. 
as the precious cornerstone, the last Adam, the light of the world, and the true vine. He, Jesus, makes this day different. He, our holiness, the very image of God, the gate and the good shepherd. What makes this day different? He makes it different. As the hope of the world, as the word of God, as the righteous one, as the ruler, as the one mediator between God and mankind. What makes this day different? He makes this day different. The word of God, the righteous one the ruler, the mediator, the author of our salvation, the Alpha and the Omega, the Savior, the light of the world, the great shepherd over His people, the Lord of glory, the servant, the creator. He makes this day different as the resurrection and the life, as one who is holy and true, the way, the author of life, the truth, the Son of Man, the life, the Lamb of God. He makes this day different. His name is Jesus. He is the author and perfecter of our faith. He is our deliverer. He is the Messiah as our atoning sacrifice. He makes this day different as the judge of the living and the dead, the bread from heaven, the son of David, the son of the Most High. What makes this day different? It is He that makes this day different. He is a lamb without blemish. He is faithful and true. He is the Holy One, our redemption. He is our righteousness, the living one, the mighty God who was sent to this earth, who is King of the Jews. He makes this day different. He is our protection. He is our righteous branch, the high priest, the chief shepherd. He is the true light, the bridegroom, the living stone, and the wisdom of God. What makes this day different than all the other days? It is Jesus that makes this day different. The atoning sacrifice for our sins, the firstborn from among the dead, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the name that is above every name, and indeed the Amen. He validated the testimony about Himself. Do you understand that? All of those things that we have said about Him just now today were validated in one dramatic act when life came back into the very dead body of Jesus Christ and He walked out of a tomb so that we would never have to remain in a tomb. He walked out of that grave that day that makes this day different than any other day and into the lives of His people. And so we should ask the question, what makes this day different? He makes this day different. But then secondly, what does it mean? What does it mean? Perhaps we can rephrase what makes this day different with what difference does this day make? What does it mean to us? Well, let me ask you that question. What does it mean this day that makes it different than all the others? What does it mean? What does it mean to know that you were not born simply out of a natural relation between a man and a woman alone, but you were made by the creative act of God Himself. What does it mean to know that you are not a chance result of biology, but a purposeful plan of God, whatever your name may be? What does it mean to know that the God who created all of this, the, the sun and the moon and the stars, the constellations and the galaxies, knows your name? What does it mean to know that you are not a result of an evolutionary development of apes, but you are made in the very precious image of God Himself? What difference does this day make? What does it mean to know that there is... A love so grand and so glorious that this someone would stop at no length to do what is necessary to restore and rebuild a relationship with you. What does it mean to know that despite the fact that we fall and we fail every single day short of the glory of God, that He has not given up on me? What does it mean to know that if you have never felt wanted in your entire life, that He has always been in pursuit of you? What does it mean to know that we are not left to wonder or to wander as to how to reach out to this Creator because our Savior has always been reaching out to us? 
What does it mean? What difference does this day make? What does it mean to know that there is a power that is greater in me than any power in this world? What does it mean to know that my sin, no matter how great and dark it may be, is not beyond the reach of His mercy? What does it mean to know that I will never be left abandoned or forsaken, but kept and cherished and led? What does it mean, church, to know that the one I serve is before all things and above all things and beyond all things? What does it mean to know that the one I serve sustains me and strengthens me and uses me for His glory? I hope you're beginning to see that there's some implication to this day that not only makes it different from every other day that there has ever been, but that day that is different makes a difference. What does it mean to know that life is not simply a journey into darkness and death where we live and cease to exist, but there is something more. There is someone more who desires an eternal relationship with us. What does it mean to know that though a person die, yet will he or she live again? And the grave is not a tomb, but it is a doorway. What does it mean to know that there is life and joy and light and peace that will flood our eyes and our hearts the moment we reach the glory of that golden shore? What does it mean to know that eternity in the presence of and for the purpose of glorifying Almighty God will be beyond what we could ever have imagined to ask? What does it mean to know that right now, right now, that risen Savior who lives today is preparing a place for you to live in light of His glory? What does it mean today What does it mean to know that the world, the world around us is not spiraling out of control, but is simply progressing toward a prophesied future? What does it mean to know that though I cannot see what tomorrow may bring, I serve a God who knows the beginning and the ending? What does it mean to know that though the forces of evil may surround and or threaten, He has my days numbered before them, and not one shall cease to pass. What does it mean to know that He who came to this earth, He came that I might be taken to heaven? What does it mean to know that He wore the crown of thorns that I may wear the crown of life? What does it mean to know that He laid down His life that mine may be raised up? That He bore my sin that I might receive His righteousness? That He defeated the enemy that I might gain the victory? What does it mean to know That He lives and so I live. That He is in me and so I am in Him. You see, it is because of what the Lord did for me with His mighty hand when He brought me out of the darkness of my Egypt and you as well, enslaved by our own sins, and the strong hand of the Lord raised us up and will raise us up just as He did our Lord Jesus on that day, which is different than all other days there has ever been. It is because, Exodus 13, 8, of what the Lord did for me and for you. It is a day that is different than any other. And a difference that is made unlike any other. And that's what makes this day different. He makes this day different. And what a difference this day makes because of it, church. As we remember the difference He made in that one grand glorious act, please watch 
as it's spoken in song and we remember in sacrifice the trial before the triumph that brought about this great and glorious difference.